Chapter One of the Life of Saint Ignatius of Loyola. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Chenevere. The Life of Saint Ignatius of Loyola by Francis Alice Forbes. Chapter One Pamplona and After. The gray morning was breaking mistily over the little town of Pamplona in Navarre. To many of those within the citadel, it seemed as if the grayness of the morning had found its way into their very hearts. So unpromising was the outlook that lay before them. The little garrison had been weakened by the retreat of many of the Spanish officers. Their fortifications were incomplete. Ammunition was scarce, and encamped at their very gates lay the French army. The attack might begin at any moment, and unless the expected reinforcements arrived, nothing could save the citadel. Author's Note In the year 1512, Navarre was annexed by Ferdinand of Spain. Nine years later, Jean d'Albret, the rightful heir, assisted by the French, made an attempt to regain it. The sympathies of the Navarrese were entirely with the invading army, which advanced without hindrance to the walls of Pamplona, the capital, which had been hurriedly and partially fortified by the Spaniards. The French made their entrance into the citadel on May 20th, 1521. End of author's note. The idea of surrender had suggested itself to many minds and would certainly have been put into execution had it not been for the efforts of a young Spanish officer, Inigo, or Ignatius de Loyola. For days he had been exhorting the weak, encouraging the faint-hearted, and putting something of his own high courage and hopefulness into every heart. The viceroy would certainly come to their relief, he urged. The conditions offered by the French were most humiliating to the Spanish pride. For the honor of their country, let them hold out a little longer, and all would be well. It was hardly to be wondered at that young Loyola, endowed as he was with a marvelous gift of influencing others, was the darling of his men and a favorite with all. His family was one of the noblest in Spain. He had already distinguished himself on the field of battle, but it was not only as a soldier that he excelled. An expert in many of the sports of the time, he could write a love sonnet or a religious poem with equal ease, and illuminate them skillfully when written. He was a good dancer in a country where men and women are born with rhythm and music in their feet. But he was above and beyond all these things a man of war. His dearest aspiration was to win honor and glory as a soldier, to make for himself a name which should live in the history of his country. We shall see later how this aspiration was realized, but the battlefield and the manner of the warfare were hidden for the present in the secret counsels of God. Ignatius's hope of a speedy reinforcement was vain. The viceroy did not come, and the attack began that day. The assault was desperate. The young Spaniard fought like a hero of old. Wherever the fire was hottest, he was to be seen on the ramparts, a figure in shining armor, fighting with the strength of ten. Assailant after assailant fell dead at his feet, or was hurled backwards over the ramparts, but the citadel was doomed. A cannonball struck the battlements, where Loyola stood, sword in hand, like a young Achilles and rebounded, shattering his right leg and grazing the left. Ignatius fell, and with him fell Pamplona. When the wounded man recovered consciousness, he was lying in a tent in the French camp, and one of the most distinguished of the French officers sat beside his bed. Slowly the truth began to dawn on his weary brain. He was a prisoner, and Pamplona was taken. Then his eyes fell upon his sword, and he began to wonder. "'I am your prisoner,' he said, turning to the Frenchman. 
and yet they have left me my arms the officer bowed with chivalrous courtesy all brave men can appreciate true valor don inigo he replied you are our guest is there anything that i can do for you i am at your service the young spaniard thought for a moment my uncle the duke of nagyara is on his way to pamplona he replied i should be grateful if you would let him know that i did my best as soon as he was able to bear the journey ignatius was conveyed to the castle of loyola where he was received by his elder brother don martin there the leg owing to the unskillful setting of the bone had to be broken afresh and for several days his life was in danger long weeks of weary suffering followed not the least part of which to the active spirit of the young soldier was the enforced inaction for every movement caused him pain at last the wound healed and the doctors examined the injured leg carefully there was just one thing they thought perhaps they ought to mention the right leg would be a trifle shorter than the left and a little less shapely the vanity of the invalid took alarm owing to the dress of the period with its long tightly fitting hose any particularity in gait was very noticeable ignatius was not a little proud of his good looks and his graceful carriage was there no remedy he asked anxiously could nothing be done the doctors looked at each other gravely there was one remedy they said but they could hardly advise it the wound would have to be reopened part of the bone sawn off and the leg stretched with an iron machine then possibly all might be well do it replied ignatius promptly the doctor still hesitated the operation would be a very painful one they objected and would be followed by many weeks of suffering during which the patient would have to remain perfectly still do it repeated ignatius doggedly in those days the modern inventions for deadening pain were unknown the patient was firmly tied down and fully conscious of all that was going on endured as best he might ignatius like the gallant soldier he was set his teeth and bore the pain without flinching but when all was over and the anguish of the tortured limb was a little easier the thought of the weary days before him was almost more than he could bear bring me a book a story a romance anything to pass away the time he cried books were scarce in the castle of loyola for printing had but lately been invented they brought him what they had and ignatius read now the things that happen on this earth seem often to fall out of chance and men are apt to forget that the will of god is behind them ordering and directing all one of the books that fell into ignatius's hands was a story that had ever moved the hearts of men to the noblest thoughts and actions it was the life of christ written by a carthusian monk of saxony who had brought to his task a mind enlightened by the loving study of the scriptures and a heart purified by long hours of prayer not in soft speech is told the earthly story love of all ages that showed thee for an hour shame was thy kingdom and reproach thy glory death thine eternity the cross thy power the heart of the young soldier flamed within him as he read surely here was the master of whom he had always dreamed a hero king whom it would be indeed an honor to serve a leader of men whom it would be truly worth while to follow he prayed as he lay on his bed of suffering and learnt to make a friend of the lord whom he was beginning to know in spirit he followed him through the towns and cities of galilee rejoicing as a heart that has at last found its ideal in his noble and gracious presence it was to be a lifelong friendship for ignatius and one that was to grow in strength as the years rolled on 
but the change was not effected in a moment the daydreams of his early life came back persistently why should he give up all that was so attractive to his youth and ambition for to take service under this new master meant the renunciation of all that was pleasant to nature what would his friends say would they not laugh at him at court but the voice of the divine leader sounded above the tumult of the flesh calling the young loyola to his service one night when the desire to do what was best was strong in his soul prostrating himself before a statue of the blessed virgin he bound himself in true soldier's language to follow her divine son to the death at that moment a shock like that of an earthquake shook the castle of loyola breaking the windows and cracking the wall of his room from top to bottom ignatius now thought of nothing but a life of penance the idea of going on pilgrimage to the holy land barefoot and a beggar appealed to his fancy afterwards he might perhaps enter the monastery of the carthusians he even sent a servant to the charter house of burgos to make inquiries about the rule of life of its inmates though strict secrecy was enjoined on the messenger it is probable that it was not kept for don martin began about this time to show anxiety he had not failed to notice the change in ignatius and was not quite sure what this strong-willed young brother of his might have on hand he reminded him of the hope of the family that he would bring honor on the name of loyola and of the career that lay before him he knew little in what way that hope was to be realized or how that career was to be fought out if the walls of the chamber could have spoken where ignatius had lain for so many weary days and night where he had prayed so fervently where he had as we are told the blessed virgin herself appeared to him with her divine child in her arms they could have foreshadowed the truth ignatius was from henceforth for better or for worse the champion of the king of heaven his dreams of earthly glory had faded in the light of his master's eyes end of chapter one